Young people told us, in their own words, what was important for their well-being. And those included things like being in a group, safety and unity. And they wanted safe places in the community where they could authentically be themselves. They wanted permanency, spaces that would remain for them. One young person said, something I could benefit from is just having a safe place to go. And somebody you could actually confide in and say whatever you need to. Just having safe areas where you can go and not be afraid of the place being torn down or being removed to put up something like condos. If we look at the organizational level, it's important for cities to reduce barriers for access to mental health care and support for young people. One way to do this is by normalizing seeking mental health services. That involves sometimes a cultural shift. But another way is to make mental health care available and affordable to youth in the places where they are. That can mean schools, that might mean on your phone with an evidence-based digital intervention. And it means in the community by training people to deliver mental health care and ensuring that that is care that's culturally competent. Young people talked a lot about safety. And for them, safety meant freedom from violence, whether that's assault or harassment. But that freedom also referred to freedom from discrimination, discrimination based on race or ethnicity, sex or gender, and from discrimination resulting from living with a mental health condition. So at the policy level, city policies and laws must provide these kinds of protections. Green space was a particularly important uh, factor during the pandemic because green space provided access to nature, but it also provided safe places for social interaction. Overall research points to urban living as a risk factor for poor mental health. So you see higher risk of anxiety, higher risk of depression, higher risk of psychosis. And of course, young people under the age of 25 
are those most likely to move to cities for opportunities. Start with young people from the diverse communities of your city. Bring them to the table. This is a really unique time right now because young people around the world are talking about their mental health and they have a lot to say and we need to be able to listen to them. Surround these young people with city leadership, with educators, with urban designers, with healthcare providers. AI algorithm to imitate a very uh, the best teacher in the world um, like Da Vinci plus Einstein together to give every student in this world uh, equal um, education right to have a personal tutoring yeah, for each of them and with very cheap price so that um, uh, we all can have the best education level in the world. We find their own learning pace and give the, them the right material, the right coaching uh, and the right exercise. And they can understand that, wow, I can learn and I can learn so easily and I can gain better ability of learning. And so they became very thrilled about it and uh, very confident about learning. Uh, Squirrel AI adaptive model, we can, you know, uh, to follow their own pace, to make it very slow, very digestive, and they can understand and they can go uh, faster and faster. It's like pushing the train at the beginning, the, the minority students, they doing very poor, but uh, after like half a year and one year in Squirrel AI, and they perform better and better, they got very good learning abilities and they can learn just like others. class when we just uh, you know taught by the slow pace we are not fully developed by our brain but the scoring system could you know uh, to get all the potential of the, of the brain they are building their abilities to explore it and so I think human may be uh, 10 times smarter after decades of using score AI What we see now that heat waves are more frequent, prolonged, and with higher temperatures, 
we see that preterm labor is going up. What that means is that women give birth too soon because the body can't cope with the heat. That means that children are born with very low birth weight and they're disadvantaged health-wise from the get-go. Young newborn children cannot cool down their body. They can't thermoregulate their body the way we do. What we do, we breathe faster and we start to sweat. Babies can't do that. They don't have the same typology of sweat glands yet. So rather than being able to cool down their body by sweating, it leads to organ failure, such as kidney failure. If you look at the staple crops in Africa, we see across the board that staple crops yields are going down by on average 30 to 50 percent depending on which region in Africa you are and what to, you know what specific crop you're talking about. Now imagine that situation with a growing cohort of young people in Africa. The youth bulge is real. Now if in the first five years of your life you do not get enough nutrients it leads to what we call stunting. Then we have to start adapting our policies. Policies across health, nutrition, education, social protection, water and sanitation. It's not always about more money. It is making sure that when we do health or education or other programs, that they're done in a child-centric way, taking into account the unique vulnerabilities of children to climate change. We can simply do better by opening our eyes, by researching more, by having adequate policies that are child-friendly, created, co-created with young people whose future this is about. <music>